G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the northwest side of the map, we've got Salami1 playing as the Delhi, as you would expect if you were if you guys are unfamiliar with this player. Look, if there's one word to describe him, I would just say Wallalol would be the word. This guy, he has been playing some absolutely insane games lately. Going up against some of the best players in the world and pulling off the absolute most ridiculous crazy Wallalols. So I'm looking forward to seeing whether we spot some of those out today. His opponent who spawns on the opposite side of the map. It's I Love Pepega. Going to be playing the Abbasid Dynasty for us today. The map, of course, is the one, the only, the Mongolian Heights. And we've already got Salami in the middle of the map, dropping down this dock nice and early, putting all of his attention on the wood line. You can see five villagers over on wood uh, and uh, just a handful of villagers at the moment on the sheep. No double scout opening for him. Sometimes you actually see players go for double scout or even triple scout opening on this map. In one circumstance, I did actually see, I think it was Beastie QT playing up against, it might have been Lucifron. I'm not 100% sure. Um, it was, I'm not even kidding you, like a 10 scout opening. They both opened scouts into scouts into scouts into scouts. It was more scouts. I, I, I wanted to cast the game, but it only went for six minutes. So I'm like, I don't, want, I don't really want to give you guys a six minute game. Like you might enjoy it. It might be a short time, but you know, if, if you're sitting down on the toilet, you're grabbing your phone and you're like, I'm going to watch a Drongo video because I'm doing my business. Hey man, six minutes ain't going to be enough. I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm going to need at least an hour long video, Drongo. So we'll try and make this video go a little bit longer, getting in a nice and personal with you guys. So House of Wisdom, him. going down for Isla Papega. He is rushing up to the next age. No wood chopping for him. No lumber camp dropped down at this stage. No mill on the berries. And obviously, no uh, no, no water taken at all for him. So that is very curious for him. Uh, only the single scout opening. So going to be going up against the single scout opening of his opponent. But uh, I'm really curious to see how he's going to be able to hold up against the water opponent or the, the water of his opponent. Because the, the way I see it is typically in this game... If you don't go for water, you are absolutely stuffed. So I'm curious to see how Papega is going to be able to go up against Salami here. Salami already opening up with three fishing boats. Already going to be walling up the crossing as well. Now, that was one of my thoughts was that if I was Papega at this point, if you take a look, right, Salami, he hasn't even scouted out some of these crossings, right? Like he hasn't scouted this one here. So for all intents and purposes, Papega could you know, be down here, or, or secretly he could be down here booming his to his heart content uh, with, with fishing boats. And that's what he wants to do. He's got cheaper docks, but obviously he can't do that because he's going up against Salami. He's playing the Delhi. Delhi, obviously, their f uh, fishing boats are going to be able to fire. Now, he could wall it off right here. He could do a, a nice little wall like that. That doesn't stop Salami from building his own uh, fishing boat or his, his own dock down here. But then that's when you start getting into that sort of, that next level of, of play. And now Salami going to scout this out, going to realize that there is nothing down here. And he's pretty much got the entire water for himself and that really gives him a huge advantage in the early game just to give you guys an idea of what we're talking about with regard to the advantage have a look at this 20 villagers for salami compared to his opponent who's only on 15 so despite being three minutes into the game salami's already up 25 percent of a village account that's absolutely huge going to be going up with the economic wing papega is no surprises there moving a fair few villagers over onto that wood chopping three villagers on gold i would expect that he would pull those off as soon as he hits 125 or roughly thereabouts he's probably going to overgather just a little bit it sometimes happens it sometimes happens but uh, i wouldn't be surprised to see those villagers move up potentially head down towards a stone mine actually uh, up over here and uh I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a, uh, a 2TC opening for him, or even a 3TC opening, as we have been seeing the Abbasid Dynasty Tour. Now it looks like a little bit of a late dock coming out. This is not what I expected, and I don't think Salami is going to expect it either. You can see he's got the scout running around on the shoreline, just looking for some sort of water presence, and he's not going to find it, at least not, not for a few more seconds. Behind this, Salami aging up, going up with the mosque. Uh, plenty of villagers on wood, so if he needs to get that Dow out, he will be able to get that Dow out. But uh, obviously, his fishing boats, they're able to defend themselves, so he's not too fussed. Plenty of villagers at the moment on gold and food. Typically, what we've been seeing the Delhi do is a fast castle, but it's always a little bit more delayed. Uh, for some reason, I apologize. That was That's the mosque that he's just put up. I, I thought that was the Dome of the Faith, but it wasn't. He's only just putting the Dome of the Faith down now. Eight villagers dropping down with that. And we do see that wall coming in. So I love Papega. Now, I would have loved this, uh, just like Papega loves uh, Papega. Um, I would have loved this at, you know, minute one. This would have been really, really nice here because you can see now 
Papega is actually going for fishing boats. And I feel like this is a little bit delayed because when you compare the pair, you've got five fishing boats over here for Salami versus the one fishing boat over here for his opponent. So I really feel like, you know, you're at a bit of, bit of a disadvantage by delaying that uh, d delaying that uh, fishing boat and that or that dock and that wall. But uh, this is the correct uh, response to it or the correct uh, way to be playing it, making sure that you're walling off the crossing. If you are going up against the Delhi Sultan, be sure to wall off these crossings. That way their fishing boats aren't going to be able to come down and harass you, kill your fishing boats. If he wants to get through this, he's going to need to, you know, bring out units of some sort or begin to, to uh, approach on this side with a dock in one of these respective spots. And then from there, you can make it, you know, a little bit easier for yourself. You can get your own Dow out. You can, get, you can drop down an outpost. You can do lots of different stuff. Uh, but uh, speaking of outposts, it looks like Papega going to be looking to drop down his own outpost here. Now, Salami does actually spot this. He's got his scout down here. He's got the line of sight. He's going to be moving his fishing boats, looking to see if he can get some shots on here. Villagers aren't in range, so perfect job there by Papega. Any closer, and you can see he probably would have been having those getting gotten taken out, but uh, manages to do quite well. Wall up to the north as well now, going down for Salami. So both players looking to play and prepare for the... Uh, the early, or the mid game rather. And uh, yeah, Salami looking to, to, to go ham. He's got quite the economy behind this. Uh, six villages on gold. Now keep in mind, the Delhi, they get free upgrades or free technologies. You can see he's already got forestry. Uh, plenty of villages here on, on this wood line. Probably needs to add in another lumber camp here. And uh, back on the mill, you can see he's going up for wheelbarrow right now. That's almost through. He's obviously through to the next stage, so he's going to be able to go for double broad axe. We see specialized pick will probably be coming through as well. And then we'll see horticulture also come through. So all these free techs, keep in mind, they also get things like extended lines for free as well. Uh, so a lot of nice techs for the Delhi to get free in the second age. But uh, typically we have seen Delhi players just skipping through, going straight up to the third age. Also got efficient production coming in here as well. Sanctity going to be coming in afterwards. Two minutes and 45 seconds to do that research. Not too bad at all. Up towards the north, it looks like the scout doing a bit of scouting for Papega. Uh, he is yet to throw down a second town center. Actually going to be throwing down an archery range in his base. A lot of villages on gold. So it kind of looks like he wants to fast castle or at least do a bit of teching. But at the same time, not really much is, is happening on that front. And now it actually looks like... so. The outpost is firing at the other outpost, only doing one damage a tick. Ideally, it should be firing at these fishing boats, and that, that's a little bit of a frustrating way that it works. It will just default back, and now you can finally see that Papega has chosen to fire over at these fishing boats, but if he moves it out of range, watch what happens. If he, if he moves the fishing boats out of range, the outpost is just going to start firing at the other outpost again, so it becomes somewhat infuriating to constantly have to re-micro but uh, now it looks like Salami gonna continue outposting up his opponent's side of the map and uh, just enable him to have a little bit of uh, protection here he's gonna move his fishing boats up the up the river prevent them from being attacked and uh, that's essentially what this outpost has done so this outpost has forced Salami to come up forced him to drop down his own outposts invest a little bit more in the resources on water obviously he's training up more fishing boats as well he's got plenty of villages nearby if he does need to drop down any potential outpost again because he's already got one over this side one over that side and now we do see the dock coming down for papega towards the north side and an outpost in response for salami the correct response and we can see those arrow slits just coming off and being able to focus down the villages from all the way across you can see the, the absolute range that is on these bad boys they fire very very far a couple of villages going to be getting inside as well firing off a couple of extra arrows but realistically not a lot of pressure that this is going to cause now this is actually a pretty smart move from papega because you're investing 75 resources in this dock and it forces out the outpost from your opponent which actually costs 100 resources so it's a it's a net gain for 25 resources so pretty pretty smart little move right there i will say but stone wall is now going to be coming up from salami so he was obviously mining stone earlier and we did think maybe it could be a town center that he was going to throw down nope he's throwing down huge stone walls at this point and that is how he's looking to invest that stone uh back on the other side of the map we'll have a look and see where papega is up to looks like he's going to be aging up clicking up i'm assuming with the culture wing as most people do and indeed he does go up with the culture wing we'll have a look at his technology see where he's at he's got the wheelbarrow on the way in at the moment no specialized pick, no double broad axe at this stage, uh, no horticulture for him just yet. So a, a little bit behind on the uh, on the uh, economic 
technologies. We'll check in with Salami. Uh, we'll see what his technologies are looking like. So you can see Double Broadaxe about to come in now. Obviously has Forestry as well. No Horticulture. Bit of a mistake right there from Salami. Specialized pick, not yet researched either. And so keep in mind, this guy is an incredibly highly rated Adeli player, rank 35. And if even he is forgetting to get his Specialized pick, then do not feel bad. If you're playing your Delhi games and you're forgetting to get those economic upgrades as well, it's okay. We all do it. You sometimes forget. Even, you know, Salami only plays the Delhi and he still forgets to do it. So it's okay. Don't feel bad. But uh, yeah, behind this Salami, got enough resources to click up to the next age. Going to be able to do that now. I wonder if he's going to go for the compound of the Defender. Instead goes for the House of Learning. Uh, so this is probably the, the standard landmark in about, what, 95% of cases. It's rare that we see the compound of the Defender come out. Um, and now Double TC going to get dropped down for Isla Papaga. So he is looking to invest a little bit more in his economy. Both players continuing to tower up. We've actually got a transport ship that comes over right now. Papega going for a little bit of a proxy, and I don't think Salami's got any idea about this. He's got no clue. Obviously, he knows his, the enemy's dock is down here, and he knows that he's fishing, but uh, realistically, he doesn't know what he's up to. So, a nice little move here from Papega. And, you know, when, when you are walling up like this, you are expecting your enemy to respect those walls you are not expecting them to bypass them you're not expecting them to to go the long way around it's just it's not something that's in your mind because you're it, it's it's almost like a cognitive bias you're anchoring to this idea that i've got walls therefore i am safe and that's very dangerous because as you can see in this position salami being so smart actually bringing the scout down if he spots out the transport ship he will know exactly what is up so what what should have happened is if we delete that transport ship then we'll never know but salami what is he doing he's got oh he's, is he scouting out for relics potentially maybe that's what he's doing where are these villages these villages are up here towards the north this scout is looking he's probably going to be able to he does spot the proxy so proxy gonna get scouted now what ideally what salami should be doing in response to this is not showing that he knows so do do not show this scout just let him continue adding in all of these units oh no oh no salami doing what he does best gonna be coming in and looking to pull off a potential wallalo right here there it goes the first one we've got the king of the wallalo coming out right now gonna be able to turn over at least one man at arms takes a villager as well and keeps that that uh, that monk alive Going to be chasing away those villagers and doing a great job with it. So very smart there by Salami. The alternative I was going to say is that you just prepare for your opponent's attack. If you just, if you know that they're proxying, then you just monitor them, watch what they're doing and prepare appropriately. Or you can just do the Salami route, which is just go send in a, 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 a scholar with a, with a relic on the back. Why not? Why not? Classic Salami move. Uh, now, towards the front, Salami is still going to be fighting it out with the outpost. We can see that uh, attack warnings are going off. Slowly, these outposts are going down. 730 health on that bad boy. Slowly but steadily. And uh, now it looks like Double Men at Arms going to be coming out here for Papega. So he's going to be able to, to deal with that uh, the Men at Arms of his opponent. Um which he did obviously capture from trying to chase down that villager. Now, I think this is the only remaining villager on this side. Uh, if he does take this one out, there's only going to be two barracks for him to deal with. And I'll be honest, if you're doing a proxy base, two barracks really ain't a lot. He's even got the villager in here chasing him around just because it's got the faster movement speed. He's never going to be able to catch him with that men at arm. So having to use the villager, having to use the scout as well, and doing a little bit of a ring around the rosy, and that villager will go down. Only three health left on that bad boy. Once One more attack from the scout is going to kill it, but the villager decides to take out his brethren converts him changes his religion says hey before you were the same religion but now we're different and that's all it takes that is all it takes if you've ever studied history you'll know that is all it takes but uh now it looks like the men at arms gonna be coming out here from salami you can see he's got the uh the the scholars inside the barracks beautiful barracks for the delhi sultanate as well i gotta say i absolutely love these the infrastructure the uh the the, I was going to say the archaeology, the architecture, rather, uh, is, uh, is is absolutely awesome. And I suspect we'll probably just see this man at arm cancelled here uh, from Papega. Um, does cancel the uh, does cancel the barracks. Looking to actually get these out. Not sure exactly why. There's just you, you, there's no way you're ever going to be able to contest this. I suspect probably just going to be looking to do a little bit of damage. And indeed, that's what it is. Triple Relic going to be coming out for Salami to defend. you got to hold on to your horses when you've got this many relics to deal with. Because that is always frustrating to try and play up against. But he does actually just put them inside this the uh, mosque for now just gonna leave them safely in there now keep in mind he's got three on his side two on the opponent's side so papega is gonna have access to two so salami getting a, a little bit of a favorable spawn now I'm, I'm just gonna assume that was the case and that he didn't cross the river and go look to grab one because obviously he could very easily go look to grab that one as well very close to the middle of the map and uh still b beginning to train out these uh the, these uh, men at arms, but now we do actually see that uh, there are more villagers that have come across. So six villagers coming across from that transport ship, 
and uh, looking to rebuild a new proxy. Now, Salami does scout that. He knows what's happening. He knows that they haven't really moved. Home Blade's coming in as well. The unique technology. The Man at Arms getting in onto the wood line. And uh, this proxy does look like it has been shut down, at least up towards the north. There's going to be a new proxy down towards the south, you would expect. But uh, at this stage, it looks like Salami has managed to keep his head above water. Um, let's have a look. A, a little bit of a stock take. 52 and 38 for Salami. We're going to compare that to his opponent, who's on 70 and 12. So about 20 more villagers. But obviously, keep in mind, there are the scholars that we need to consider as well. Uh, when it comes to scholars, it looks like there's eight garrison scholars. I don't know how many we've got out on the map, but uh, we'll call it 10. Uh, there's also these two bad boys down here. So we've got three in here, three in here, two in there. So that's eight. And then these two makes 10. So we've got 10 uh, military population coming in there. So uh, yeah, realistically, you'd say that... Uh, but things are relatively even at this point. Probably a little bit of a lead uh, for Salami just because he does have those relics as well. Salami looking to keep that Mosca. Uh, I, I wonder if this reduces the time down for all of these things. I, I, I don't know how it works, like whether it's the same as the influence, like whether you've got to have everything connected. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but now it looks like we've got the uh, the forward keep going to be coming in for I Love Papega. And uh, it, oh, Salami doing the classic... Salami doing the, the classic villager pool, pulling 23 villagers to siege. Now, keep in mind, these guys do amazing siege damage. That is 230 siege damage a pop right there. And because there's no boiling oil that's through yet, these villagers are going to be fine. Obviously, as soon as boiling oil fall comes down, he's probably going to have to fall back. But uh, he's adding a huge amount of siege here. Consider the fact that he's only got seven men at arms here. They're doing 16 a pop. So realistically, he he's looking at about 112 siege from his men at arms versus 230 siege from his settlers or his villagers. So it makes a lot of sense to be pulling these, but obviously they're gonna, he's going to have to be careful once the uh, the boiling ore comes out. It takes a while for that to recharge. He should be able to survive two hits and still be able to pull out with that boiling oil. Got to be careful. Now Salami looking behind this to actually pull off a triple wall. Oh, he's, spri he's, sl oh my, he's splitting up. We've got to take a... This is beauty. This is beautiful right here. Is he actually going to do it? One of them looks like a might get taken down. He's looking for more villagers. You can see up towards the north, he's on these double gold mines or gold mine and stone mine. Now over towards the west. It's the triple wall. Oh, he's doing it. He is actually the wall of gold right now. And he looks to capture. How many villagers does he get in the north? Four, five. And the whole wood line has been taken by Salami. This guy is an absolute king when it comes to Wallalo, taking the enemy villages and just putting the work in absolute insanity right now for him. 68 villages for Salami versus the 59 of his opponent and immediately puts down a castle in the base of his opponent. Papega manages to get up to the next age. It's going to be difficult for him to do that with a castle in his base, though. He is really going to be having a tough time. He's trying his best to keep his opponent on his feet. He's got the men at arms in the base, but Salami has really turned this game on its head. This is absolute insanity. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Obviously, there was the most recent game. You guys would have seen it where he did actually go into the base of his opponent. The game was pretty much won at that point and really just for, for you know, for BM purposes, just went in and started stealing villages. This is different. This is aggressive villager theft is really what's happening here. His opponent was obviously, you know, keeping his eyes on other areas of the map. The triple wall of went off took out a huge amount of villagers that got converted. They're absolutely ludicrous. This is a next level Wallalol strategy, literally stealing your enemy's villagers and then building a castle. And he planned to do this. You can tell that he had so many resources in the bank. He was able to drop a castle. And now he's forcing the issue with his opponent, the third town center from his opponent over here, looking to actually get siege down by these men at arms. Salami doing a great job of doing that. And uh, we've got a bombard that has come out, double siege workshop here, but this is gonna get siege down very quickly by the men at arms. These guys. Have got force march if they need it but obviously there are villagers that are going to be able to heal this up but uh, keep in mind there's no castle there's no keep here for his opponent and now salami going to be coming in and you can see the villagers running for it they know exactly what salami is up to get out of here we got to run through the hills john from wales is going as fast as he can it looks like a villager split going to be coming in as well bombard probably going to be chasing this scholar so got to be careful with that bombard that bombard will absolutely destroy the scholar going to be one shot and one kill but now we're going to be able to find another relic in the back of the base villagers turning around going to begin sieging or attacking that scholar and i suspect this bombard will be able to one shot it if it does manage uh, to get that uh, that new instruction but now back towards the base of salami things just going absolutely swimmingly for him the proxy over towards the base of his of salami is completely shut down 
The Bombard going to be able to take down the Scholar, loses the Relic. So now there's these two Relics over on the opponent's side of the map that are very safe for him. Going to be trying to throw down these Emergency Barracks, but really Salami just in his base, killing his dudes at this point in time. That Bombard is not looking too long for this world as well. Six Men at Arms just chasing it down. We've got another Six Men at Arms on the front line looking to dish out some damage. And we've got another Castle in the base, the ultimate BM move. The village is also going to be sieging down the town center of his opponent. This is absolutely terrible damage for Vega. I'm so sorry, man. This is... <laughs> I can't believe... And now he's running into the base with the, the next Scholar. These guys are so fast, by the way. 1.5 movement speed. And now he's going to be running right on top of the villagers. He's going to be able to take out the Bombard with the villagers that he stole and then drop down another Wallalo, look to steal more villagers. Doesn't look like he's going to get any of them. Maybe a few men at arms. He does capture a few. And now they're going to be able to take down the Bombard. It is just absolute insanity how he manages to utilize the monks or the scholars with their relics convert those Wallalols into meaningful outcomes as well, because sometimes you see those Wallalols go off, there's nothing meaningful that's gained, but here he gains the villagers, steals them away from his enemy, builds the keeps inside the base of his opponent, begins to siege down the town centers with those villagers. It's ludicrous how he converts that, and it looks like Pepega, Pepega has just tapped out. Salami has been victorious. Fellas, if you've enjoyed this game, make sure you check out Salami's Twitch. He's doing absolutely crazy stuff like this every single game, and he is truly, in my opinion, the god of of Wallalong. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.